broke the bottle. And I say, the title of it, HOS Rock Hard Bodies Junk Car. Okay? I mean, that's pretty, I'm pretty honest about it, right? I mean, you all love the new car You know, none of them are trash. It's all, you know, four or five chassis.
plan for their proper schedules, helping them to schedule, talking to them about the different classes and what those entail, um, discussing different diploma types, etc. We also do college and career planning with them, and we do a lot more of that than what they do at the middle school level, and we do a lot more of that as they get closer to being upperclassmen. And we also do help with social emotional counseling, um, but probably a lot less than the middle school counselor does. And we are also very fortunate to have a social worker. So we do have a, a licensed mental health clinician who can help uh, with issues with our students. So next year, we have talked to your students about what their schedule is going to look like. At the high school, we operate a block schedule. It's called Block 8. Uh, and so these guys know most days, four <coughs> classes. Fridays, eight classes. So we have blue days, gold days, and white days. On Mondays, you go to classes one through four. On Tuesdays, classes five, six, seven, eight. Wednesdays, blue days, just like the Mondays. So back to one, two, three, four. Thursdays are gold days again, so five, six, seven, eight. And then Fridays, I told them I wouldn't confuse them <coughs> with the number sequence, but basically you go to your morning classes, your Monday morning, then your Tuesday morning classes, then you go to your Monday afternoon and Tuesday afternoon classes. Um, but we call those skins, so in a much shorter time frame on Fridays, uh, and then the class periods are fairly long on Mondays. 85 minutes. 85 minutes. Mondays, <coughs> Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. So, but we do follow the semester schedule. So, two semesters for the year, eight classes each semester. That gives students 16 crediting opportunities throughout the course of the year. One of my eighth graders, how many crediting opportunities do you have over the course of four years? You guys don't be quiet because you were all shouting it out on Monday. 64, that's right, 64 crediting opportunities over the course of four years. So the goal is to earn credits. One class per semester, as long as you pass it, equals one credit. You earn one credit. If you fail that class, you do not earn that credit. And if it is a required class, eighth graders, what happens? You retake it. Thank you. So, if you will please note, in red, House Enrolled Act 1002, um, the Education and Workforce Development, requires the State Board of Education, in consultation with the Indiana Department of Education, to develop new diploma requirements that represent a more learner-centered, future-focused K-12 <coughs> system. That takes place with the class of 2028. We have not yet received full guidance from the state on what that looks like, but we've got your students. So please know we will take care of them. Um, these are current diploma types. We don't necessarily anticipate that the academic portions are going to change a lot, um, and we will cover on the next slide what we do think will change. So there are three main diploma types. There's the core 40, which is the standard <laughs> diploma that the state expects students to receive. Then there's the core 40 with academic honors, which is an upper level um, academic affiliated diploma type. And then there's the core 40 with technical honors that is more toward, uh, geared toward our students who are taking a lot of STEM related or career and tech education classes. Can you do both of those? Yes, you can. Students can earn because there's how many crediting opportunities over four years? Come on, guys. 64. That's right. <laughs> you got Dyer Prize. I love it. 64 crediting opportunities over the course of four years. So students can definitely earn 440 with academic honors and technical honors. But again, some of the details are subject to change. What the state is really hoping to get out of these diploma changes are making high school um, requirements more flexible and relevant to not only students but employers and communities. 
Uh, they want to improve access to and the number of students completing high quality work-based learning opportunities. So in other words, internships, um, some opportunities to get out into the world and on the job and learning. And they also want to increase access to um, and the number of students completing post-secondary credentials before high school graduation, whether that's dual credits or um, certifications, things along those natures, or along those lines. So the, really the goal is to help students become more prepared for the day after graduation. That's what the state is saying to us. So we want to go over real quickly current 440 um, diploma requirements. Students are required eight English credits, so that's one semester of English all four years. So your students are always going to be in an English class. That's six math credits over the course of four years, and those math credits must be one year of algebra, one year of geometry, and one year of algebra two. So it can't be a year of algebra, a year of geometry, and a year of business math. To satisfy the 440 requirements, it must be those three classes. And those credits must be received during high school. Six science credits are required. Two of those are biology, which is what your students will be taking next year. Um, and two of those must be either chemistry, physics, or integrated chemistry and physics. And that will be sophomore year, so they'll learn more about that in the future. And then those final two science credits um, are up to the student. And we have lots of opportunities for them to choose from. They also are required two world history credits to graduate. And those they will take next year as freshmen. They must have two U.S. history credits, and those are taken during the junior year. One economics credit and one U.S. government credit, those are taken during their senior year. Two physical education credits, which are taken freshman year, and one health credit, which is taken freshman year. So if you hear the pattern, we are very front end loaded. Um, we do try to get a lot of this, a lot of some of the required things out of the way while the students are freshmen. Uh, current 440 with academic honors credit requirements are the same with a few exceptions, five exceptions. Number one, 47 credits instead of 40 are required. Students must take two math credits beyond those Algebra 2 credits. Uh, currently the options are finite mathematics and pre-calculus and trigonometry. Now we also have students who double up when they are sophomores and um, then they're able to take AP Calculus with us their senior year. We also require, well, the state requires students to take two fine arts credits to receive their uh, four courses academic honors diploma, and they must take six <coughs> to eight world language credits. Six being if they take one language and stick with that all throughout high school, so three years of one language. Or students also have the option of taking two years of one language and two of another, and that's where your eight credits comes in. Additionally, they may not have a grade lower than a C minus in any of those 47 credits, and they must earn a 3.0 GPA by graduation. So that's a B, B average. My eighth graders, I'm going back to this. What was it, what's that add up to on the left? We talked about this. Do you guys remember? 440, but there's 29 credits there, right? We talked about that in class. So those are your academic credits, your, and we call those the have tos. Your want tos or your elective credits are how we get, the, get to the total of 40. So lots of opportunities for your students to take some things that they enjoy as well. Currently, we also offer the 440 with technical honors. The requirements for it are the same as the 440 diploma, but then there are two um, aspects of the academic honors diploma that they must meet, and that's no grade lower than a C minus, and they must uh, graduate with a B average. And then students also have to complete a state-approved career and technical education um, pathway. And they either have to earn some dual credits or um, earn a certification. To graduate, not only do students have to earn a diploma, they also have to 
jump through some hoops. And they're good ones. So just to give you guys a little background, a little history. In the past, students had to earn their diploma, and then they had to pass the English portion of the ISTEP and the math portion of the ISTEP. That has gone away, and we are, we're glad about that. We had some upper level students who even still struggled to pass maybe the math portion um, or the English portion. And it was very stressful to students. Um, now we have what we call grad pathways, and you will hear the word buckets a lot from now until graduation. Bucket one is still earning your diploma, whether that's 440, 440 with academic honors, or um, technical honors, or some other name to it, if the state deems to choose those um, labels. But that still is gonna be bucket one. Bucket number two is learning and demonstrating employability skills. There are multiple ways for students to jump through this hoop. One way is a part-time job. One way is completing a full season of a sport at the high school level. Um, we offer a course called JAG, which is Jobs for America's Graduates. That's one way to satisfy bucket two. Um, also, completion of some career center programs and doing some work-based learning will help with bucket two. Um, community service as well. So bucket two, not difficult for our students to earn. In fact, we have a lot of freshmen who already have bucket two taken care of and fulfilled. Bucket three is where we sometimes run into some issues. Bucket three is demonstrating that our students are post-secondary ready, which means they're ready to either enlist in the military, to go into the workforce, or to head off to college. Um, so students must demonstrate that they're college, career, or military ready. There are several ways to do this, but they're not super easy. Full <coughs> uh, one way is by earning a certain score on the SAT. And it's a robust score. Uh, one way is earning the academic honors diploma. But we don't know if that has been achieved typically until the very end of your senior year. Another way is by taking uh, some dual credit or some AP classes. That tends to be a good way. And then another way is to become what we call a CTE concentrator or a career and tech ed concentrator, which is completing one of those pathways, um, which consists of a principal's class, a concentrator A class, and a concentrator B class. And we're going to talk more about that in a little bit. So your students received um, a sheet with all kinds of class choices on it, and um, we just want to be clear that the ones at the top, they don't have any choice. We apologize for that. Again, we're super front end loaded. Um, they do have the choice between English 9 and English 9A. English 9A is, I don't want to say accelerated, but it's a little more advanced, more rigorous, um, more critical thinking, um, more is expected of them, but it's not necessarily a faster pace. Uh, additionally, once we get to, so they are going to check all of those um, top ones that are listed above electives, which is a total of six classes. So every freshman is going to take English, Algebra, World History, Biology, Physical Education, then they are all going to take one semester of Health and one semester of Career Information and Exploration. So that leaves two spots unfilled. And we're going to have a lot of talks about that today. Um, and then those two unfilled spots, those are what we call electives. And electives are enrollment dependent. So your, your kids, their feet have to, do the, have to do the walking and the talking. So wherever they sign up, as long as we have enough kids to offer those courses, we will do so. I think last year we offered a course called Citizenship and Civics that we maybe had three kids sign up. They just weren't interested, so we didn't offer that back this year. So again, and they are elective, or the electives are enrollment dependent. So we want to talk about the pathways. We had a pathway showcase last Friday, and your eighth graders came over and spent half a day, roughly, with us and toured our programs. Um, we want to be clear, we do have some handouts that are available to you guys at the end. We also sent out a, um, a file of those today in an email to <coughs> students and parents. So if you guys haven't had a chance to check your emails yet, you did receive that. 
Um, but those, those pathways are a focused sequence of courses to help direct your students toward a career path. We had a great crash question earlier, um, and we'll talk more about this, but are your students locked in if they choose a particular pathway as freshmen and they don't care for it? No, absolutely not. In fact, I had a freshman, I met with a freshman today, and her question was, can I take two different ones? Will I have room on my schedule for that next year? And I said yes, and then I said that then as you move forward from your sophomore year, that's when you're really gonna have to make a decision between the two pathways. So her intention was to take two next, as next year, she was gonna be a sophomore, and then move one way or the other. So, we do have the North Lawrence Career Center where we can send our juniors and our seniors. But also, at Mitchell High School, we offer advanced manufacturing, business, construction trades, um, we offer culinary arts, but that's a shared pathway with Shoals. And then we offer education and training, health careers, and a STEM pathway. Um, now, with regard to education and training, there is early childhood ed at North Lawrence Career Center, and those are little littles. Those are preschool. They have a preschool called Playful Pathways, but in our education and training, um, our students go work at Hatfield and Burris, and occasionally a little different, typically Hatfield and Morris. So at this time, we're going to uh, pass it off to the Freshman Blue Jacket Academy, and we're going to let them talk a little bit. Yep, it is. Hello. Uh, so last year we implemented what we call the Blue Jacket Academy. It's just a really just a core group of teachers. So like Mrs. Taylor said. All the eighth graders have essentially the same six classes, and then they add, they pick those last two. So I'm Mr. Carr, I teach world history, um, and then there are three other teachers that are part of a team. All right, Mrs. Knight, she teaches English. Um, Mrs. McDonald, she teaches algebra, and then Mrs. Sears, who teaches biology. She couldn't be here tonight. Um, <clears throat> so like we said, one thing uh, last year we kind of identified as an issue was like, the moving from eighth graders to the ninth grade year, there's a kind of a big disconnect, it's kind of a big shift, and we just wanted to kind of help ease that transition with your uh, now upcoming ninth grade students. So last year we started the Blue Jacket Academy, and just as a group of core teachers, we just try and help provide and support your students as much as possible, not only in the classroom, but we're trying to get them involved with like school spirit, and trying to go to school games, um, we have different incentives that we do throughout the day. But then, more importantly, as a core group of teachers, we meet weekly on a regular basis and discuss every student that we have, because we all have every freshman. And we can kind of like say, okay, you know, if there's issues with a student, or if this student's really doing great in this thing, how can we support that? Um, and then we also kind of meet periodically out of the year to try and do larger school events with the ninth graders. Um, the big one that I really want to hit on right is that we're gonna try and do next year is, is communication uh, we're trying to make sure like weekly we send out grades and checks to the parents that way you you know your kids like not not like when Hayslip would send it out like your kids really needing some trouble or something like that but like hey they have one F what can we do to get that up in the next week or two instead of like waiting and waiting until they're too far into a hole um, <clears throat> and then really I know you're getting a lot of information today, but one thing I really want you to take away today is we have a pretty big freshman orientation day. So July 31st, uh, this upcoming summer, is the day before the teachers come back. Uh, all incoming freshmen are invited to the school, go through different, just welcome to the high school, see what clubs we have, see what sports we have, meet the peer leaders, like we have juniors and seniors who are peer leaders, um, and just try and get them acclimated to the high school. And then also for them to kind of meet the core teachers who are gonna be having them. Um, and there's also a lot of games and stuff like that. Uh, they're usually a pretty big incentive. Um, last year, and I would assume they're probably the same this year, like if any student who comes to the orientation day also gets a day off in the school year. We usually try and time that on a holiday so they have an extended holiday. Um, and the kids really seem to love that. Um, <clears throat> I'll send this stuff out uh, at Freshman Academy stuff to everybody so you have it, especially our contact info. 
Um, we just ask if you ever have any problems, just uh, reach out to any of your core teachers and we'd be happy to help. So, um, if you have any questions, we'll be around after and we can help and discuss and talk about our classes in more detail if you have questions. I'll talk about problems. Okay, one of the other opportunities we have at Mitchell is a joint um, partnership col collaboration with two other neighboring districts. So Orleans and Shoals have partnered with Mitchell and we share our facilities, our classes, and our faculty to provide uh, as wide a, an option for your child. So some of the courses you'll see, oh well, okay. Some of the courses they'll see over the course of their high school career. Um, we offer fine, we are blessed. I'm gonna just tell you, I'm gonna brag a little bit. We have an outstanding faculty, okay? So we are really blessed. And I say that, okay, I've been, this is year 31 for me, okay? I've been in education a long time. The staff we have here, I would stack up against anybody, anybody. And I mean that not just from the standpoint of they're great people. They're also credentialed, which means they can teach courses that maybe other classes or other schools cannot. And to do that in a school of 425 students is amazing. Now, add to that our partnership with our two neighboring districts. Now we can offer things through Orleans. Orleans can offer things through Mitchell. Shoals can share with us, maybe it's ag, maybe it's, um, we do building trades, construction trades. Um, we're adding business. That's gonna be an opportunity to share with some of those students. We have kids who bus from Orleans to take a class in finite math or trigonometry because our teachers are credentialed to do that and provide that for dual credit opportunity, okay? So this is a fantastic opportunity uh, that we share with two other districts. The ICC, we, are, we went into this, we, we worked extremely hard this past school year so that we could offer you the ICC. The ICC is a bank of 30 credits, 30 dual credits opportunities that your student can take and achieve free. I want you to think about that. They can graduate high school with 30 credits under their belt at no cost to you. These are transferable to any state institution in the state of Indiana, okay? That's a big plus for you. That's a year of college you don't have to pay for, okay? So the ICC is what we've been able to do. We partner with Ivy Tech as our provider, uh, and they come in and do a really nice job of helping to onboard our students onto the Ivy Tech uh, platform, get them enrolled in the classes, all of those things. Sarah, do you want to add anything to that? Okay. And, and we are um, continuously adding classes to help make that easier. Um, and we also have, like this year, we had the opportunity to get some funding for ICAP courses so that it was actually our students virtually took classes with an Ivy Tech instructor because we didn't have a credentialed instructor to teach dual credit psychology. Um, but then we do have a lot of teachers who are credentialed to simultaneously teach our kids a high school course and a college course. So they don't do any extra work, but they, they double dip, basically. It's called dual enrollment. So not only would your student receive a grade and a credit here at Mitchell, they would also receive a grade and a credit on their college transcript. And we do have, um, through Cosmos, your freshmen can take a class, a dual credit class, and it's through Vincent University at Orleans called Music History and Appreciation. So if you have a student who is going for that academic honors diploma and, and wants a fine art in music history, that's a great option. Um, or if you have a student who just loves music and that class sounds really good to them, that's a great option as well. And I'm back on. Okay. <laughs> and I'm, I'm pitching for Mr. Warner, April 1. So don't run out and get a new physical right now and think it's going to count for school year 24-25. It will not. Okay? We need to wait until after April 1. Um, academics, 
I'm going to tell you this right now. The reason, one of the reasons we put the Blue Jacket Academy in is just like Mr. Carr talked about. It's a big jump from junior high to high school. The amount of time and work and, and expectations is going to change for your child. The Blue Jacket Academy is designed to assist in that process. I can tell you that now, they do a fantastic job. It's still going to be a, a big jump. Okay? And the expectations are going to be there. Our athletes, our student athletes first. You won't play if you're not making the grades. Okay? And we check those. Your coaches check those. We follow the IHSA guidelines and they say, you know, they specifically look at grade reporting periods. But your coaches may check them more frequently than that. So your expectations, you will be a student first before you're an athlete. And you have to pass six of nine, a six of your classes every nine weeks. And that is checked. If you want to stay informed about athletics in our schedule, I'll tell you, we love these little uh, paper calendars we put out. I know people love them. But schedules change frequently. They get rescheduled, things happen, cancellations. We had the hardest time getting officials for soccer games last, this past fall. Okay? And we had to move a few games because we couldn't get officials. That's just because there's a shortage of officials. It's hard to keep up the track, keep up to date with that on a paper schedule. Follow a bit link. Link to it, follow it, and you'll get updates. And it says, hey, the, the C team game tonight has been canceled. You'll know, right? Or the time's been moved up because hey, only girls basketball uh, JV team only has enough for two quarters, right? You get those updates on a constant basis. So follow them. And there will be a, a pair of meeting to go with that. Extracurricular activities, we offer a boat load, right? We offer um, football in the fall, volleyball, girls golf. Um, you've got cross country, boys and girls, co-ed soccer, marching band, color guard, and cheerleading. <coughs> winter activities, boys and girls basketball, wrestling, dance, and winter guard, which by the way, winter guard did a really nice job this past weekend. Spring activities, track, baseball, softball, and golf. So if you're interested, and I, I will tell every one of you guys this, when we meet at the beginning of the school year. Research shows that students are, that are actively connected to their school beyond the classroom, and that could be athletics, that could be band, that could be choir, that could be anything. If you find a club you like, get connected. Those students who are involved in those things are more, more successful in the classroom. So get connected. Don't be an outlier. Don't wait on the outside because you'll get back bypass. The things will happen. Stay connected and stay involved. Clubs, academic club, academic team, amnesty club, art club, best buddies, champions together, chess club, esports, FCA, FFA, Fresh Start, HOSA, a variety of them. Okay? We have and we provide opportunities for you to get involved. The way to be successful in high school, number one, Mr. Hazel can attest to this. You cannot be successful at the high school level if you're not here. Okay? Attendance matters. Parents, we need your help. I know they're getting bigger and I know they're harder to handle at times. We got to get them here. Okay? They can't graduate, they can't walk across the stage if we can't get them through the classes. Attendance is number one. Number two, and I'll tell you this again in the fall. If you want to pass a class, I can guarantee you'll pass the class if you turn in every assignment. Turn in every assignment, you'll pass the class. It may not be an A, but you'll pass the class. Give effort. Your teachers will meet you. They will meet you and, and help you get through. Okay? And then finally, get involved. Ask the help when you need it. We have a variety of resources. I had a young man in my office today. He's facing a very unique situation. And we said, listen, you realize you can go to your counselor, you can go to Mr. Hazel, you can go to myself, you can find Mr. Mrs. Kidd in the hallway, you can, we've got a counselor, a, a social worker available. Yes, I know all those things. Thank you very much. 
we have resources. And if we don't have the direct connection for you, we don't have the answer for you, we will find the answer for you. Okay, so get with us and ask for help we need. So finally, freshman orientation, Mr. Carr's already touched on this. July 31st, put it on your calendar. We will give you a day off in the fall semester. If you attend, we'll trade one for one. Uh, and they had a lot of fun. We had an opportunity to watch, what was our attendance? We had pretty good attendance. 97 out of, out of just freshmen. 97 last year's freshmen attended. It's not bad. I think you guys can beat that. Okay? So a little bit of a challenge. Be here. We'll tour the building. We'll show you around. You'll get your class schedule in advance, right? And then you'll get your locker assignment as well. Any questions? Okay. I have the Freshman Academy te teachers are available. We have some materials up here. Do you want to hand those out or just have them available? Thank you. So you received, as, as Mrs. Taylor spoke of, you received an email today with uh, a PDF copy of all of the different career academy uh, options that are out there for pathways. We have hard copies of those if you'd like to have one of those. Take back, take a look at options you have for your child. Your freshman schedule, your students have been meeting with the counselors the past week. We're starting to pull those together. Think about those electives. What would you like to do? What would you be interested in? Uh, because they're going to start finalizing those. And I will tell you, what we do is then, just as Mrs. Taylor said, we look at what the choices are and the numbers drive the schedule. It's real simple. If you want the class, recruit kids to take the class with you. Because numbers then help us choose what courses we offer. Okay, Ms. Miller. Maybe you mentioned this, but um, you know, our kids, you know, it's overwhelming for them as eighth graders to kind of decide what they want to do. How often do our counselors have a conversation with them?
But if they get into a class and they, they have questions mid-year, all they have to do is request a meeting Absolutely. and they can sit down and they can reevaluate. And although the change may not happen immediately, it may have to wait till semester, um, those, those conversations happen all the time.